and welcome back to episode 9 of Follow Follow My Football Managers. Let's play. My name is Don, and today we have the last game of the first season versus St Johnston at McDermott Park. As you remember, the last time we played St Johnston on live cam, we lost 2 0, and St Johnston made us look very average. Since the Aberdeen game, uh, which was away, we drew 1 1. We've, uh, sorry, no, we've done part of and Aberdeen as a double header. I do apologise. Um, so we, we've had a third draw in a row versus Hearts, and the media started getting on my back a little bit. And when you're following up with two games against Aberdeen and Celtic, two derbies, both at home to be fair, so we should have the home edge, it was a bit disappointing. McGinn and Garner both getting on the score sheet. Wilson made a mistake quite late on. He got pressed, and he tried a weak foot clearance, and it just didn't work. It just fell straight to... Liam Henderson, who's on loan from Celtic, who just played a first-team ball straight into Tony Watt, who was in the box of about 18 yards of space. So that's how bad it was. And he wasn't offside either because of Wilson being dragged out of position, out wide, and his poor clearance. So, a bit frustrating to concede that goal. Nonetheless, 2 all, not a bad result at Tynecastle, at least for now. Then we had Aberdeen at home. We won 2-0, 2-1. Johnny Hayes got an equaliser in the second half. Roddy McCrory played both these games, sorry, I should mention. Um, and Liam Bart has played every game since Partick Thistle, as, including Partick Thistle. Did he play the Aberdeen game? No, he didn't. But ever since that first Aberdeen game, he has came in and played every single game from the start. I dropped Roddy for Celtic because still want to win Old Firm games. Barry McKay got the only goal of the game. And to be honest, I think 1-0 actually flattered Celtic in this game. We were absolutely destroying them. The goal was a bit of fortuitous. The goalkeeper should have done better. But nonetheless, I feel this could have been easily 2 or 3 nil, if not more. Celtic only had one shot on target in the entire game. Sort of the same sort of way it's been at Parkhead. So home advantage has been a big thing in old firm games as we go 50-50 for the season. With us winning the two at home and losing the two away, Celtic would obviously win on goal difference because they destroyed us at Parkhead both times. Then we had Park Fissel. A bit of a strange game this. We got three goals from our two centre-backs. <laughs> Barry Mackay opened the scoring before Lawless got an equaliser. I don't think he knew much about it. It was just a cross in and it just hit off him and went in. Um, Danny Wilson put us back ahead from a header from a corner before John Suter scored. Probably, I'm actually going to show this goal. It was just a header from Suter. Um, can't actually do it that way. But the ball before it, it comes from a short free kick, which I think we've been doing. I've been telling it to play it to the best header, but because I think we're not the best team in the air, the game just automatically plays it short. Forrester takes a touch, wicked ball in, and look at the space John Suter finds, just easy as you like. It's probably one of the best balls I've seen our team play this season that's resulted directly in a goal from the next touch. And then John Suter rounded it up from another goal from a corner. Um, I can't remember who scored for them. It was David Heenan who scored in the second half. A bit unlucky, I think. It was a random cross in, and Bain managed to get a hand to the cross, and it just fell so kindly for him, and Bain was still sort of recovering his foot in from the initial cross. I'm going to bring Roddy McCrory back in for today. Um, sorry, I'll just quickly check the league table. Um, as you can see, Celtic won the league. We are six points behind with one game to play, so we cannot catch them. They caught, I think they won the league after the Hearts game. If it wasn't, it was certainly the Aberdeen game, which we won and they won. Uh, but they had slipped up after that. I think they maybe played weak inside. They definitely played a full strength side against us, though. Joey Barton's not fit enough to play today. Rossetti hit yellow card limit again, so he's out for another two games. This is the second of those games. Bit frustrating, but whatever. Andy Halliday will come in. And I think that's... All I have. Oh, Reese Reed made his debut for us in the last game. Came on off the bench just to give Danny Wilson a bit of a breather. Roddy McCrory will come back in. So some youngsters getting some game time towards the end of the season. Burt also signed a new three-year contract. I paid him an extra fifty pound a week to get that extra year that I wanted on the contract. I wanted four. It was clear it was going to going to be a bit of a nightmare to get four. So I accepted three, which was still a year more than what his agent was saying. He wanted, and he was negotiating it every time, and eventually I said, right, well, we'll give you the extra £50 that you want. It's not that much of a difference, and I'll give you the extra 
if you give me an extra year, and they agreed that, so overall I'm happy with that deal. I wasn't actually sure if I was going to record this game, but I thought it gives us time to talk about the season as a whole. I will do the season review, I will skip to the end of season review for the game. Uh, after this game for that, as James Tavernier opens the scoring, yes, get in. Um, so I'll skip to the end of season just so we can talk about who goes up, who goes down after all the playoffs and that. And what to expect for next season. This season I'm going to sort of do the review during the game, just so it saves a little bit of time. I think overall our season's been okay. We started a bit poor. I was sort of learning the team. I was learning how the team should play tactically. I made a couple of adjustments and we've seen the fruits of that labour really change. I think if we'd made those tactical changes and got them correct right from day one, we would have actually won the league. Because there's points that we dropped. There's silly points we've dropped and it's fair to say that. But at the same time, I feel we've improved a lot. We could ball in a bit too deep for Garner to ever get there, really. Um, so I feel we have improved and learned. For the loan players, I'm not sure loaning was the right option for all of them. I think some of them have certainly benefited from it. This is the option I think I'm going to take with Reese Reed as well, is to loan him out. He's one of those players because his determination is so low that I think... That's a lovely goal from Kilmarnock, to be honest. Uh, Chris Kane was a striker I looked at signing. I had him a couple of years ago in FM in a Ranger save, and he done. He was fairly good for us until I managed to get catchy from Man City on a free transfer, which was an absolute coup at the time. Um, but he was the striker up until then. But regardless of that, that's a different story. Um, I feel with other ones, it might be better to have them at. Murray, well, Auckland Highway, Murray Park, whichever you want to call it, the Rangers training facility. That's a blooming lovely goal, and Liam Bart puts it away. Really glad for the lad. Three goals for the season. Given the lack of game time that he's had, that's a really good return. But I think he's going to be fighting for a first-team place next season. Maybe not quite as good as Holt, but with Fred going and hopefully Nico going, definitely opens the door for him to be that backup player if we don't sign someone else. But even if we do, I think I'm still going to try and give him a lot of game time. He's got so much potential. It would be really nice to see him grow into it. Um, but yeah, I think with some it would have been better to have kept him at Murray Park or Auckland Highway, whichever way you want. It's, it gets called both, really. Um, I think it's more commonly called Auckland Highway now, which is the area it's in, because nobody likes referring it to Murray Park because of the issues that Rangers have had. Um, and then just try to give them games here and there, or just game time off the bench in general. It's sort of one of those ones that has a lot of mixed sort of feelings in the community about, and I'm not sure which is best, so it's going to be trial and error, really. Again, it might just be a matter of just putting them on the loan list, being uber picky with the loan. I think that was offside. Yeah, it was. Uh, being uber picky with the loans, with the clubs that they go to, and uber picky with like, if they're getting first team football or not. But certainly with Reese Reed, I think because of his determination and work rate, I need to send him out on loan. I just I don't think there's a choice because I don't think he's going to develop in training all that much. And I've tried tutoring, I think I've tried tutoring him with Danny Wilson, that lasted for about two weeks before they called it off eh, before they called it off. I then tried Lee Wallace. That literally lasted one day. Um and it's because he's got a fairly low, determined personality, which does not suit our squad. Is that not a penalty for the off-the-ball incident? Um, come on, uh, so Johnson, sorry, he eventually get cleared anyway. But regardless, I feel... I'm not sure which way I'm going to go with that, is what I'm trying to say. And I've spent ages trying to say that. So there we go. I'm not sure how I'm going to go with the youth in future. Maybe mix it up and see who develops more, but again, there's so many factors to that. But certainly, I'm going to just assess individual by individual. Oh, that is an absolutely lovely goal from Zip Johnson. We just couldn't get that clear in just a double header, I think, is really nice. Again, this game doesn't really matter. That's why I was debating whether to record this or not. Um, for the first team, I'm going to try and get rid of Barton. I'm going to try and get rid of Cranshaw. Garner, I'm hitting miss on. Um... To be honest, 
He's been our best striker by a country mile. He's struggled since really the last live com or last episode rather. He's not really had much score. He's had he's had a few assists since then, but there's not really been any goals. Maybe one now. No, it just goes behind him, unfortunately. Uh, in fact, I can't actually remember a single goal. Okay, that was a bit of lucky. <laughs> Six goals for the season for Jason Tavernier, uh, James Tavernier, sorry, not Jason. Um, a bit of a poor return compared to last season, although, of course, a step up plus football manager. And a lot of his goals even last season were from free kicks. And he's not scored as many this year. I said in an earlier episode, I thought maybe free kicks were overpowered, but... I'm maybe going to take that back and actually say they're probably about right. I think if you have someone with really high free kicks, you'll score a lot, but that should happen anyway. So I would think that's fair. I mean, I'm not actually even sure what James's free kicks are. Can I actually click on him and see free kicks? So he's got 17 free kick taken. So, again, it shows it's not too overpowered, I think, that someone with 17 free kick taken. I'm going to give Nico Cranshaw what's hopefully his last game just for a run out and give Liam Burt who's had a lot of game time recently, a bit of a rest. I don't want to jade them out. He's coming off with an 8.2 rating here, which I didn't really want to take him off. Tavenier, oh, unlucky. Holt on the follow-up scores. Yeah, good substitution, we'll call that. <laughs> he came on for him again. Makes it nine games without defeat since the last, not the last old-term game, but the one before it, the one at Parkhead. Uh, I think we've actually scored a few goals even like that where Tavernier's hit the post or the bar or it's been saved and it's fallen to someone who's followed in. There's been a lot of times where someone hasn't followed in and it really annoys me, so it's nice to see someone score doing that. And I'm going to give Reese Reed another run out. Uh, all of our defence basically look uninterested anyway. I'm just going to tell him that I have faith in his ability. Uh, I'm so... Again, right now, until he starts developing, I'm going to play him as a central defender, even though I'm training him as a ball-winning. But that's just to try and develop him more rounded and to give me options long-term on how I play him. Because, obviously, with the centre-back, three is three different types and it's different ways. It's just your defensive centre-backs, a few attributes, centre-backs, a few more attributes, and ball playing defender is a few more again and it's all the sort of same attributes so right now I'm going to play him as a central defender I would play him maybe as a defensive centre back if I was to play him a full 90 minutes if it was ever an issue that I needed to do through injuries or suspensions in the early stages but I feel he can play centre back off the bench right now another good passing move here again we've scored four goals again and we've not had a goal from Joe Garner which is a bit strange. Oh, off the post from Harry Forrester. He does that so often. I have signed another player that's going to come in and rival him for that position next season who can develop to be hopefully a bit better. I will go into that in the end of season review now because there'll probably be a few more signings made between here and then. We've still not got our transfer budget for the season for next season, which worries me a little bit. I th I'm not sure if that was maybe because of performances slipped for that three draws and... Because your Rangers, the media start getting on your back and maybe the board were genuinely considering getting rid of me. Although they had just gave me a new two-year deal not that long beforehand. Wallace and McCrory, a bit of a mix-up. That could have been a disaster, but McCrory gets it away. On to Mackay. He's going to see out this game. It's a pointless highlight. I don't know why I'm commenting it. Um, <laughs> he does actually clip the bar with the cross. Trying to just, whatever James Avenir can do, can do better. The other thing is, Barry McKenna has a developed weaker foot trait, which is one thing that I like on my wingers. Is uh, that we have both feet developed again. He, yeah, he's here. Um, so he's got that, runs with ball often, and cuts inside from both wings was already there. Uh, actually, but I don't actually know how to say it says right only, so I assume the left's going to develop over time. But I don't actually know where to see how good his weak foot is. Uh, so actually, yeah, flares an issue, and I think off the ball was also added. Was there anything else added? Finishing leave there. No dribbling left. Oh no, it became more important. Okay. Again, Paddy McKay is really good at this role. He's got to have Matalan Niles next season as competition. Uh, anyway, I will be back with the end of the season review for you in about one second. For me, a bit longer, but nonetheless, I will see you in one second.
Hello, we are back. It's been a bit longer than what I thought it would be. Um, although it is only the 25th of June, I thought it'd just be a couple of clicks and it would be there. Um, but we are now at the end of season. Halliday has adapted to a short, simple passing game. That is good for us. Um, <coughs> let's have a look at the season summary then. So Celtic won the league. Motherwell, the only team to go down. I need to talk about that. That was actually an issue with that. Jay Quatongo. Oh, can we... Is he actually not with a club now? Uh, let's just... I need to quickly check this. I'm very sorry. I was trying to do all this before, and for whatever reason, he has actually went out of my shortlist, it seems. Transfer noise on my shortlist. Where's biography? For the club. Okay, finalised promises, end talks, okay? Right, so I'll deal with that afterwards. Sorry, I've been looking to get this guy, and everyone was after him, and I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to get him. But I've just realised he is now available. Um, and a free transfer, which means I don't have to pay the 350k signing on fee, which I refuse to pay. So, signing of the season is Dundee's Rhys Wabara, former Doncaster Rovers and Wigan defender. On a trial with Rangers in real life last season, and didn't make the move. And Julian Faubert also for free. Former everywhere. Actually played two games for Real Madrid at one point. Oh, he's that guy. Oh, I remember him. <laughs> one of the most bizarre transfers in history. This guy going on loan from West Ham to Real Madrid. Anyway, signing of the season for Kilmarnock for free. Um... Other than that, not really a whole lot to talk about here. Barry McKay getting the most assists, Chris Doolan getting the most goals. 96 minutes per goal, I believe. Uh, Garner actually fell down to about 99 minutes, so actually came second in, the, in both. Uh, Scott Conclure getting the highest average rating, given the price Celtic paid. You would expect that. Hibbs finally joining us back in the Premiership. All of Scotland's big five clubs are now in the top flight. Um, elsewhere, I'm just trying to see... I actually thought that um, Matthew Knox was the top goal scorer for this league, but must have been wrong. Um, other than that, nothing really to talk about. I don't think any of our players will feature further down. Uh, here's a player who I used to do so well with on FM, and he just hasn't developed in real life, Lewis Milne. It's a bit of a shame to see he became such a boss the last two FMs, at least in Scottish football terms. Um... Did, he, did I just see Edinburgh City fell out of the league system? League 2, League 2. League 2. Relegated none. Okay, so nobody got relegated from League 2. I thought I'd seen it, Edinburgh City, but they actually finished 8th. Other performers were Clyde, who finished 10th and obviously won the relegation playoff. So that covers that. Let's have a look at our friendlies. We, draw, we drew AZ Alkmaar. Eh... Uh, Yeah, here we go, sorry. Yeah, I didn't register it to actually give us updated the new fixtures, so sort by date please. Uber confused at that. That's probably how I got confused and scrolled down. So we drew AZ Alkmaar in the Europa League qualifications. Now there could have been easier draws. AZ Alkmaar are a very good team. I've tried to arrange my friendlies to sort of coincide with this. I've got Atletico Nacional, which was the highest sort of reputation team that, in fact, they were the only high reputation team that were available at the time. They are from the Colombian League, travelling all the way to Glasgow for a game. Um, then we have Chelsea. Again, this is just a sort of money spinner for us. And then we've got Falkirk who requested and said they would pay us 50000 I said, OK, whatever, we'll do it. Um <coughs> fairly happy to play Scottish teams in friendlies as well. Then got Man United at home. Again, just a money maker, just a couple hundred thousand in the bank. And then we've got Campbell Slang Rangers away from home. Are they actually one of our feeder clubs? I believe they might be. Uh, where do you see that? Affiliates. Yes, they are. So there is an annual friendly, which I sort of arranged. I think there might be, yeah, annual friendly. So there's one to be arranged with L Linfield and... None of these actually cost any money, so I'm just going to keep them. North Village Rams, I'm not sure on. Um, so then we've got Camelhang Rangers. I deliberately put this for the AZ Alkmaar game because we've got 
The game against Chelsea and Man United just before it, or in a couple of weeks before it, so... And I suspect morale might be a bit meh, so I decided to put that there just to give the players a bit more confidence going into the... Excuse me, a bit more morale even before going into the AZ Alkmaar game. That also meant that I had to turn another local team in East Kilbride, again another away game, just a local team. Friendly game with Tottenham rounds up our current pre-season friendly schedule. Again, just a moneymaker. There was two other friendlies, as you can see from our news items, which I've got cancelled. I'm not sure why Clash with the... No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Anyway, never mind the cancel. Whatever. 600,000 for our... Um, for our for playing in TV rights, uh, which actually I think is a bit less than last season. If I'm right in thinking, I might be wrong. Uh, so we kick off the season at home to Hibs. Last time we played them, of course, was in the Scottish Cup final last season in real life, which Hibs won for their first Scottish Cup in God knows how many years. I think it's something like, it was 110 years or something like that. Might be wrong, might have been 100. It certainly was over a century. Uh, and then we are away to Inverness, first Old Firm game on the 30th of September. Season expectations reached... Oh, no! Okay, at least the Scottish Premiership's a bit more realistic. And they're wanting us to I get any extra money for that, and pff, not enough to justify, and yeah, not enough to justify the extra stress. So we're just going to go for minimum here because whatever. Uh, transfer I will get onto in a minute. Match of go category I had no officials in European category dropped. None increased either. Halliday had a simple passing game. We covered that earlier on. Liam Kelly. It's now going to be our second choice goalkeeper again. I'll cover this in a minute. And Aaron Wilson, he's on the transfer list. I'm not really caring so much. Transfer wise, in we've got this guy, Sammy. I'm just going to call him Sammy. But I think it's Sammy Ajaye or something like that. If you let me know down in the comments below, that would be great. Um, fairly decent defender, potential wise anyway. Not really at the moment. But again, we'll offer decent backup. There was another defender that I was looking at, but it was going to cost about two million. I do not have two million. He joins us in five days' time. Um, actually, not sure contract offer. We one point eight k per week, so fantastic. A lot cheaper than Clint Hill, who's similar current ability and didn't have all this potential ability. One thing that worries me about him hitting this potential is he's already twenty three. He does have the determination and work rate. Looks like he'll be very good in the air as well at 16 jumping reach and 14 heading. Uh, how tall is he? Can we see that somewhere? Please? 193 centimetres. So this he is quite heavy though, but he should be very good in the air. Gordon Greer I covered previously. Gent comes in. Sort of with a half look over on his coaching qualifications for maybe bringing him in in the future. But I came, I looked at his personality and... He's a Rangers fan, and I just thought, you know what, let's give the guy a chance at the club. Unlikely to prove in the future, obviously, he's 36, but he is a big match performer, something that I really enjoy about a player. I do like a big match player. Can play all our sort of roles, and I don't believe he has a preferred side. Okay, he does prefer to be on the right slightly as a ball-playing centre-back. I mean, even look at those stats. That is very good for us, and I think he might even be better than Danny Wilson. I'm going to compare right now. Right, Danny Wilson, where are you? There you are. So, yeah, defensively, he's an absolute rock. Aerial ace matching Danny Wilson, which is a bit disappointing because Wilson isn't really the best in the air, although that's not reflected so much in this game. Uh, a lot slower, obviously, a lot less physical. He's 36. Vision, maybe not quite as good. But defending, mental and aerial are the three stats that I really look for in a defender, and he has that in abundance, so he can come in and more than do a job for us. Leadership of 19 as well, so will be able to man the defence quite well. I will play perfectly with Wilson. Wilson prefers the left. Obviously, Suter would be the preferred choice. Matilan Niles, we covered in a previous video, or also join us on a free transfer from Arsenal. Had a lot of loan spells recently, most recently at Derby, but he didn't make a really any appearance last season, which is disappointing and a bit of a worry. Stats are okay for a winger. Um, 
attack, very good flair, decent off the ball. Crossing is a big worry, and I will be putting him on training for that. Um, particularly when with a winger, crossing is just such an important attribute. But everything else is okay. I might try and retrain him for left wing. I don't know if that would be successful. Maybe see um, what foot say as well. That's the other thing. Right footed, so... Yeah, so I might see about retraining him as an inside forward on the left to rival Harry Forrester. Talking of Harry Forrester, we had an offer for him. It was non-negotiable and I laughed out the park from Brentford. We also have Vincent Sasso joining us. Or, yeah, Sasso. Again, I'm going to look at him as a ball-playing centre-back because this is sort of the best judge. But again, 14s, 12s, 13s, 16s for determination. So... He's not going to develop further at 26, but still good. Positioning 12 is okay. Tackling 13 is okay. Technique, vision, parking and mass, uh, passing and marking are a bit meh, but okay enough. Again, tall, good jumping reach, good heading. She could be an absolute t boss in the air, which again, we don't have right now. And an okay first touch. Former Sheffield Wednesday player before that at Braga. And again, comes in for free. Uh, again, what contracts he's going to come on? 5.5k a week. So again, he's taking a small wage cut. Does have a very, very small minimum release clause for foreign clubs, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. We've got Greer and Ajayi there for future reference, if need be. We also have Chris Wallach, also joining us from Arsenal. He was on loan at Inverness Cali this season. My scout recommended him. He will come in. As you see, he's not quite ready to compete with Harry Forrester, um, but he is an inside forward, right-footed. And I believe my inside forwards on support. So again, passing's a big worry. Everything else is okay. Decisions again a bit of a worry, but everything else is okay and acceptable for this level. I mean, not outstanding, but he's going to compete in the league. Crossing not so much important for inside forward. Again, could use a bit of improvement, but I think there's other stuff that I would worry about first, such as long shots. But I'll probably just stick them on the inside forward training. That's everyone that's coming in right now. I've not spent any other money. Everyone's coming in is free. We got 298,000 budget for the season, which I'm slightly disappointed about. Although we were, are well under our wage budget, and we still have Joy Barton on that wage budget, who's taken up just about 10% of it. Um, the other issue that I have is John Suter. Now, I want to get this guy on a new contract to get rid of that ridiculous contract he was already on. Not interested in talks. That's because talks broke down. Every time I go and offer my new contract, his agent says, try to reduce the fee that he's on. Which is extremely, extremely, extremely frustrating. Um, so Johnson are interested in him on a transfer. Okay, well, let's offer two clubs. Uh, I'll actually go for 90k just now. 85, 90. Um, so that's that. As you can see, Liam Burton and Rod Roddy McCrory, who were both going to come into the team this year, are going out on loan. Um, ignore all these free transfers. This is what actually ended up happening was, I need to go back and forward, um, what ended up happening was, for whatever reason, my head of youth development, I've told him to go and find players for the young team, for the youth team, what I meant by that was go and find someone who can come and play in the first team in the future, so he's meant to find players for the youth team, and he's been linked to a few players that I've thought are okay, oh, Lewis Vaughan and Stephen McLean also joined us earlier, because their contracts expired earlier, both strikers, had a loan offer for Vaughan, which I turned down because it just it was rotation. And at 21, he really needs to be playing some football. I mean, he's not the best, and I need to detrain him as an advanced forward to fit my system. He'd probably be able to do that if you look at his stats. He's okay in all those stats. Not spectacular, but okay. So he could do it at 21, he can retrain. I'm going to try and retrain Steve McLaren as well. Steve McLaren. If not, I'll probably just retrain him as an advanced playmaker, to be honest with you, if it doesn't really work out. And give myself another option there with Burt going. So, Clinton Hill's retired. He is now a coach. Okay stats. Not really. I'd maybe bring him as a defensive youth coach if we needed someone. But, I have no interest in it just now. Senderos, obviously, away. Other big names. Tom Walsh was a big name under... Well, not a big name, but a player that Stuart McCall gave debuts to and done okay with. Uh, Anyone else? Russ Lyon was a player that was... 
and so many other saves I've seen him have huge amounts of potential and on my save he's just not there so I just decided not to renew his contract and when you look at all of the positions that he can play as well it would have been so good to have held him on a good potential even if it was just a free star so he's on the bench but it is what it is um, Motherwell loan fee of 1.2k a month now this is actually a strange one they came in, they offered full wages in first team football. Now, I actually thought they were selling SPL club. I didn't realise they'd got relegated. I should have checked the league. So I'm thinking, yes, he's getting offered first team SPL, well, SPFL Premiership football. Still living back in the day, calling it the SPL. But I thought, yes. So they said, right, we'll give him £850 a week, which isn't his full wage. I think it's like 100 off. And I said, well, give me full wage and a grand if you use them or and two grand if you don't use them per month. And they said no. So they maybe got a slightly better deal because I said, well, give me 1.2k and 2.4k if you don't use them. This is just a sort of little punishment. It's just a small fee, but again, there's not a lot of money in Scotland, so that's okay. Similar deal for Roddy McCrory. They offered 100% of wages and 1k and 2k. Again, it's a small fee, but... It is what it is. He gets first team football in the SPL, which I'm very happy with. I wasn't actually going to loan him out, but that's a deal that I think will suit both parties. All these guys, my assistant decided to sign all the youth players in the world that came in last year. I ignored most of them, and he signed them all. So I've now had to release them all. It's cost the club a load of money, and I'm going to have to reassess that situation because the whole logic of it for me was... He goes out and he looks for a player like Jai Kotongo, brings him in, and we train him up, and he plays in the first team in two, three, four years' time. He might not make it. We might sell him on for a profit. He might just not make it generally. But that really annoyed me. The only other outgoing... Re oh, no, wait. There is one more. Nico Cranjar. An annoying deal, to be honest. I sold him just to get him off the wage budget for free. Um... But he went to Greece. Obviously, there's not a lot of money in Greece. I don't know exactly what the full script is. But we also have to pay 3.5 thousand till the end of next season, which is still reducing his wage by half, just without us having the option of playing him. But I'm not bothered about that. He wasn't going to get any game time anyway. So, and it was the only offer we could get. I can't get an offer for Barton. I can't get an offer for Gilks, who also want to get off the wage bill. That will allow Liam Kelly to come into the first team as a backup, sort of doing the same sort of role. Rod, uh, Robbie McCrory done last year with the cup games etc other than that the only other major talking point going out right now is Martin Waghorn he is worth half, just over half a million and decided if I can get 300,000 for him I'll just let him go and I transfer listed him he was a bit unhappy about it fair enough he wants to say at the club I understand that but the reality is, is we've got about 10 strikers right now and 8 of them we need to develop and another one that's fighting for the first team place with Garner and Waghorn. And Waghorn just wasn't going to go. So if we can get 300k for him, it gets the 4k he's earning off the wage bill. He's not going to develop any further at 27. That's that. So that's sort of on to next season situation. Overall, I'm fairly happy with that. A couple of guys wanted out for a loan. I've rejected a few offers for Crooks and Windass. If I can sell O'Halloran, I will. What I'll do is I will be back for a double header for the AZ games. I will do both games. Um, just because of the importance, to be honest. So both those games will be on stream uh, stream on uh, the next video, episode 10. I genuinely don't know when that will be up. I covered it in the last episode. I am moving. I'm sorry, but I just can't commit to any sort of upload schedule because I don't know when. My internet's going to go off at the old house, and my internet's going to go off at the new house. That should obviously be instant, but if I move before that obviously can come out and do that, I can't upload. So, I don't know when it'll be. I can only apologise for that. Hopefully it will be soon. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give a like and subscribe. I know this has been a bit longer episode than normal. I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. And I will hopefully catch you for those AZ games.